Good evening. I'm Roger N. Wilson. Webster describes an odyssey as an extended, adventuresome journey. The eight-year odyssey of Robert Blackwell docking has been just that, extended and adventuresome. It began nine years ago today when the Arkansas City banker and mayor came to Topeka to announce that he would run against incumbent William Avery for the governorship of Kansas. A little less than five years before, his father, George Docking, had left the governor's chair after two terms. What some, particularly Republicans, perceived as a Docking dynasty was about to continue for twice as long. Docking in Odyssey, a presentation of WIBW News, tracing the eight-year administration of Kansas Governor Robert B. Docking. We've been going together for three years now. Four. Charlotte, will you be my... Yeah. Yeah. My... Oh, my. It's a gorgeous car. What is it? It's a new Charge Dodger. A Dodge Charger 500. Dynamite. Yeah. What's that? That's the optional Hertz shifter. Elliot? Yeah. Hey, where are the headlights? They're hidden uh, where the bumper loops around the grill. Hey, these are the new high back seats. Yeah, see how nice they fit? My name's Sheila. What's yours? Elliot? That's a cute name. Bet it really rides smooth, huh, Al? Why don't we find out? 1970 Charger 500. If you can cope with a whole new image, you could be Dodge material. Allie. My baloney has a first name. It's O S C A R. My baloney has a second name. It's M A Y E R. Oh, I love to eat it every day. And if you ask me why, I'll say, cause Oscar Mayer has a way with B O. G and A. Oscar Mayer, the first name in Bologna. How's that? On December 27th, 1965, Robert B. Docking, banker, mayor of Arkansas City, and son of the only two-term Democratic governor in the history of the state, came to Topeka to make an announcement. Republican Governor William H. Avery had recommended to the Kansas legislature an increase in the state sales tax, a modest increase. The legislature had given him a major increase. The state had almost more money than it knew what to do with, and people weren't happy. Neither was Robert Docking, who decided it was time the Docking name returned to Kansas politics. In announcing as a Democratic candidate for governor, Docking sharply criticized the incumbent Avery for his taxing policies. As we approach the 1966 budget session, the Madison Avenue sales technique gains momentum. A new approach became apparent this past week. After all, it was Christmas. And as if to salve the tax load, ease the mind, and secondarily to pave the way for the re-election of our so-called leading salesman of Kansas next year, we were given the soothing message that there would be no necessity for new taxes this year. Kansans deserve better. They deserve a statement to east, west, north, and south alike, and out of the same side of the mouth, what proposal our leader has for legislative apportionment, for true economy and state government, for correction of congressional and senatorial gerrymandering, a discussion of the issues meriting his consideration, even though somewhat controversial. In the months that followed, Docking and his wife, Meredith, campaigned the state challenging Avery on his tax policies. And in that campaign, a scandal arose involving a Republican politician, William Addington. Addington was accused of falsifying grain warehouse receipts and defrauding the government. And there came upon the Kansas political scene another name that would become synonymous with Docking, Hayes attorney Norbert Dryling, who was Docking's campaign manager and displayed a style the Republicans would come to dread for a decade at this Topeka press conference. It's our contention that the people of, the Can of Kansas, either intentionally or unintentionally on the part of the state officials, have not only been misled as to what the state found in Hutchinson, but actually concealment without foundation 
seems to have been the password. When it was over, Democratic challenger Docking had beaten incumbent Republican Avery by more than 75,000 votes. In October of 1974, during a conversation with Docking, Wilson asked what factors he considered in deciding to run for governor, even nine years prior to this discussion. We thought we could do better, and uh, we thought that there should be some changes made, and um, visited with people, and people visited with me, and uh, I had several other people in mind that I thought would uh, uh, be very fine governors, and. Uh, uh, we all kind of talked together, and it was uh, decided that uh, perhaps due to my father's name identification and uh, some of my governmental experience, the city commissioner and mayor, and uh, also some of my fiscal experience by being a banker in the insurance business and so on, that uh, uh, I might be the strongest candidate. A few days after the 1966 election, the Arkansas City Mayor-slash-Banker-slash-now-Governor-elect met with reporters to talk about his new administration and how he was going to handle his business interests back home. I mean, we'll have to have some people come in and uh, uh, do part of the work that uh, I have done, although they've done a tremendous job of doubling up and letting me more or less uh, direct the operation by telephone. I certainly won't be able to devote much time to the bank uh, during the next two years. On January 31st, 1966, Docking made his first legislative budget address to the legislature. A cliche was born. Ladies and gentlemen, I consider this an austere but adequate budget. This budget reflects programs initiated by prior legislative action. I now invite your close scrutiny and careful reappraisal. We share a joint responsibility to give our citizens quality services rendered effectively, efficiently, and economically. I've always hated my hair. Even my mother told me, Wendy, wear a hat. You know what I really hated? My shampoo. Now I'm using Every Night Lemon. It's really different. It has mild, old-fashioned ingredients that get the dirt but leave the life and shine. It's pH balanced. I can use it as often as I want. My hair's not oily, and it's not dry. Thanks to Every Night Lemon, I don't hate my hair. Now, I hate my nose. Every Night Shampoo from Helene Curtis. It's so different, you'll love your hair. Once you've had a taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken, it's a taste you can't forget. It's a taste that's almost irresistible, a taste you gotta get. Cause you'll never beat the taste of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You're never gonna beat the fun. You're never gonna beat the kernels, herbs, and spices. Come on, everyone. Get Kentucky Fried Chicken. Have a barrel of fun. A good tasting, good eating, good time barrel of fun. In our October conversation, I asked Governor Docking what he thought the single most important accomplishment of his eight-year administration was. Making the issues of government, uh, the issues of the people. When we first started out, uh, uh, we talked a lot about constitutional revision, tax reform, uh, uh, these type of areas, homestead property tax relief uh, for our senior citizens. And I think that these are issues directly affecting people. Is there anything left undone after eight years that, that you really wanted to accomplish? Well, of course, uh, we, uh, I think, have done a lot toward uh, reforming our tax structure uh, and to try and make it more fair and equitable. I think there is uh, more to be done in this regard. Uh, also, I think there's more to be done in uh, governmental reorganization, the uh, consolidation of uh, services that uh, uh, could be done in the benefits of bringing uh, more economical and responsible government uh, uh, to the people. Docking's relationship with the legislature for the first six years of his governorship was, to say the least, stormy. At times, they fought like cats and dogs. One battle royal occurred in 1969 when the legislature appropriated from the state's balances 27 million additional aid to education. Docking vetoed the measure, and the legislature overrode the veto. Sandwiched in the middle of the fuss, the Kansas National Education Association called a school crisis alert in Kansas to warn teachers seeking jobs in the state that all was not kosher here. 
With the $27 million appropriated by the legislature, the school crisis alert was called off. Here are some short film clips of that fray. Since the bill calls for $27 million but does not provide the money, it places our state on a collision course with bankruptcy. I am considering calling a special session of the legislature to ask them to fund or finance this bill. But I hope this will not be a waste of $9,000 a day. Of what it amounted to was a very mild form of sanctions uh, uh, by notifying teachers in all other states that if uh, uh, they were considering uh, accepting employment in Kansas, they should first consult the Kansas State Teachers Association to learn what the conditions were. Now, the reason it was called off was because uh, we felt that uh, with the $27 million additional state aid, this was a, a substantial improvement uh, in financing. A special session in the immediate future would be premature. We wouldn't have the information which we do not now have about true tax reform. Many of the measures touted uh, uh, under the label of tax reform actually work just the opposite. And I think we need the full research to be able to do a proper job in this area of tax reform, which we're very anxious to do. I might add that I think the governor's intemperate and vicious remarks on the legislature during this past week have done a great deal to unitize and focalize the attention of the legislature and the public on these particular measures. And I think it accounted for the fact that, for example, in the Senate today, on the highway bill and the education bill, we had 100 percent vote, 32 out of 32 among the Republicans voting to override on both of those major bills. A prominent Republican legislator was quoted yesterday as explaining that my criticism of Republican legislators for their partisanship angered the Republican members into solidifying their votes. How could their votes be more solidified if they had agreed to override a veto before they recessed? This is one of the reasons to melt their solidification that my recourse was to go to the people of Kansas and ask directly for their help. Well, I uh, look at it that many of our uh, problems that we used to have uh, because of our state's relatively good financial position uh, as to where it was before. For instance, there's uh, not the problems of $26 million school funds being unfunded and this type of area. I think that uh, many of these problems that we've been able to uh, work on a compromise and we don't have those uh, basic differences, but I would say, Roger, that uh, my differences with the legislature over the years, we've had some high visibility disagreements and some also some high visibility agreements, but they have, I think, pretty consistently passed 80 to 90 percent of my recommendations, which is a pretty good batting average, I think, regardless of political parties. And um, my differences with them have never been uh, uh, personal. They might have been, in a sense, uh, partisan or political, but we, I've never really had any personal uh, differences as far as I know with the leadership or with uh, individual legislators. Uh, I regard them all as uh, fine men and women, and I've enjoyed uh, working with them. Among the legislative accomplishments of the docking years was the tax lid, but even it didn't come without a fight. The governor's chief antagonist was then Senator, now Governor-elect, Robert F. Bennett. What I have uh, recommended to the legislature amounts to a taxpayer's bill of rights. A property tax lid which will control, control spending and force local governments to reestablish priorities and live within their means. That it does great harm to the local governments of Kansas and that it does great harm to the state and that it's mechanically unworkable even with all the amendments that have been endorsed by the governor. The 73 and 74 sessions of the legislature, however, saw almost a miraculous change in attitude. Harmony abounded, and so did the accomplishments. The legislature passed and the governor signed over $150 million worth of new spending for the state, including about $80 million for aid to education. What a shot! The Watsons have just about clinched the $1 million rebound championship. Bob, give us the highlights up to this point. 
Well, Jim, the Kleppels took an early lead in this two-cushion rebound game, but after the fourth shot, were a solid 60 points ahead. Then Dick Watson came through with a beauty to even the score. In the sixth, with tension mounting, Jerry Kleppel flubbed a big one, leaving it wide open for the spectacular shot that just about wrapped up the game for the Watsons. Thank you, Bob. Now back to live action. The Kleppels are down to their last shot, worth one million dollars. And, mm-hmm, what a shot it'll have to be. He's taking his time. He aims. It's off the right bank. Perfect off the left wall. Through the two blues. He's made it. And we were only uh, kidding about the million dollars. Rebound. A competitive game for two or four players from Ideal. It was a political scandal that helped propel Robert Blackwell docking into the governor's chair. So it was only natural that his political enemies would look for scandal in his administration. In 1969, they found one involving allegations of bribery in the matter of a parole. A young attorney on docking staff, Robert Oakes, made the allegations to then Republican Attorney General Kent Frizzell. The charge accused a member of the Board of Regents and a close personal friend of the governor's, Vincent Bogart of Wichita, was carrying a bribe to the governor to obtain the parole. Docking demanded and got Bogart's resignation. And at a news conference, he explained why. This request was not made lightly. It was made without predetermination of charges of impropriety. Mr. Bogart's resignation, unfortunately, is necessary. He should be free to defend himself and his family against legal and political allegations without fear of impeding the operations of the Board of Regents or damaging respect for our system of higher education. Bogart, an attorney, admitted to appearing before the State Parole Board on the convict's behalf, but denied all allegations concerning a bribe. Nonetheless, he was arrested, arraigned, and required to post a bond. Later, the charges against him were dropped but not before there was another casualty in the case. Pardon attorney Robert Oakes, docking fired him, accusing him of making a secret pact with Attorney General Frizzell to politically embarrass the governor. It is indeed unfortunate that a naive young man has been used as a pawn in a political chess game. I am appalled that my own attorney and staff member, along with the Attorney General, did not voluntarily disclose information to me relating to an alleged impropriety or wrongdoing. A year later, another accusation was hurled at the governor, this time personally. A Republican legislator, Don Bell, accused the governor of conflict of interest. That affair involved Docking's personal and family holdings in Topeka's First National Bank. The state was negotiating to buy the bank's old building, and Bell blasted the governor. I am informed that the governor's interest in First National, First Topeka Bank shares is 1,800 shares which have a value of $45,000 to $50,000. He therefore has a $45,000 to $50,000 interest in the First National Bank of Topeka with whom he is dealing on behalf of the state of Kansas. A week before the election, Shawnee County District Attorney Gene Olander decided there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute the governor. And the voters decided there wasn't enough evidence to vote him out of office. The third major crisis to face the docking administration hit close to home. In January of 1974, a grand jury indicted the governor's brother, Dick Docking, and 18 others on kickback charges involving an architectural contract at the University of Kansas Medical Center. Some said the indictment was the reason the governor decided not to seek re-election or to run for the United States Senate this year. But in his retirement speech on March 2nd, the governor disclaimed the incident as a factor. Mrs. Mildred Frankler of Teterboro, New Jersey, if you can identify the lowest list price car built in America, you will win our grand prize. Is it Pinto, Vega, or Gremlin? Gremlin! Gremlin! That's right! Gremlin has the lowest list price! You have won our grand prize! Dinner for one at Burger World! <laughs> I want the car. No, no, Mr. AMC Gremlin, the lowest list price of any car built in America. Docking as a politician was a legend in his own time. Four men faced him in elections, and all four lost. After Avery, Kansas City restaurateur Rick Harmon tried. It was the era of political debates in 1968, and Harmon and the governor squared off. 
And this administration has placed more money in education than any other administration in the state's history. This is a burning issue, and he's tried to confuse this issue by talking about tax reform when I've said he's also had a chance to make tax reform. Well, I don't know that he's really uh, said uh, what he's going to do about education other than he wants to make it sparkle and uh, do these other good things. However, in the last two years, we've been dealing, uh, uh, dealing with facts and doctors. He had his opportunity to provide leadership to our educational system, and his leadership consisted of veto. Docking beat Harmon by 36,000 votes, the closest margin of his political career. Then, Attorney General Kent Frizzell, Docking's main antagonist in the Bogart affair, challenged Docking in 1970. And again, there was a political debate. The governor beat the Attorney General by 71,000 votes. Then came 1972. Morris Kay, the Republican majority leader in the Kansas House, mounted a slick advertising campaign in an attempt to win the Republican primary. Kay surprisingly won, setting up another political debate for docking. You will find that he cast negative votes against the enactment of the property tax lien, that he was absent or not voting on other legislation. Uh, property taxes have continued to go up, even under the tax lid. Uh, this is a major problem across the state. A tax breaker is needed to assure that the property tax can no longer impose a tax overload on a homeowner. It seeks to encourage and better the life of Kansans and specifically our farm families. Instead of asking the voters to buy a commercial product, we're asking them to approve once again a solid and a consistent record. What we want is something that uh, will be good for the people of Kansas. Let us continue to walk forward together toward the good two-party government the people of Kansas do expect from those who seek to lead. Kay was swamped by docking. The governor's margin of victory was over 230,000 votes. By 1971, Governor Docking was nationally prominent in the Democratic Party, and there was speculation that he might be tagged as a vice presidential nominee in 1972. A presidential contender, at the time the frontrunner, Edmund Muskie, came to Kansas on the governor's birthday, a traditional Democratic fundraising event in the state. Would you give the Governor Docking any consideration to being a running mate for you should you receive the nomination? Well, you can understand that after my recent experiences, I hesitate to answer questions about running mates. But Muskie's uh, candidacy fell apart and George McGovern became the party's nominee in 1972. Docking was definitely not a McGovern man. But perhaps the most serious crisis to hit the Docking administration occurred in 1970. Violent disturbances hit Lawrence, the KU Student Union was burned, and at least two killings were committed. Steve, I think perhaps one of the toughest and more emotional decisions that I had to make was when we um, had to call a, and felt that we had to call a curfew uh, uh, in Lawrence, Kansas, uh, the University of Kansas, uh, uh, following the burning of the Union Building and the demonstrations that we had there to call in guardsmen and uh, to actually kind of shut down uh, the community. I was raised in Lawrence, and this was an extremely difficult decision, but there have been others that uh, are difficult too. That was an emotion charged thing particularly that resulted in uh, a couple of killings, if I recall correctly, a, a very difficult situation for the state. Can you give us now in retrospect any insights in what went into the making of that decision? Did you fear that uh, Lawrence would be burned again uh, as uh, Quantrill may be burned at uh, hundred, uh, more than a hundred years ago? No, I don't know that that was uh, really a fear. But I do think that uh, there certainly was a nervousness on the part of a great many people. Uh, some people I know were arming themselves uh, in the event that things would go out of hand. And it would seem, it seemed to me, as though that it's government's responsibility uh, to uh, protect the people. And we had to do what was uh, necessary to protect the life, the health, and the property uh, uh, of the people at that time. And, uh, there were a lot of things that went into the decision, a great deal of um, uh, talking with people that have been uh, friends of mine uh, nearly all of my life, and it seemed like uh, the best judgment at the time. Lawrence and later Kansas City, Kansas cooled down in time, and the state was spared the cataclysm of other states. Docking as governor, 
traveled abroad extensively during his eight years to Vietnam in 1967 at the request of President Johnson, to Japan and Israel in 1973, and to Japan again in 1974. The Japan trips were economic development journeys that bore fruit late in 1974 with the joint venture of a Kansas and Japanese firm becoming a reality. It was something Docking viewed with a great deal of satisfaction and personal pride. Have it your way, have it your way, have it your way at Burger King. May I help you, sir? Two Whoppers, two Whopper Juniors, and four Coca-Cola. And would I have to wait long if you made one Whopper with no pickle and no lettuce? No, sir. Hold the pickle, hold the lettuce. Special orders don't upset us. All we ask is that you let us serve it your way. Oh, well, in that case, could I have the other Whopper with extra ketchup? Sure. We can serve your grilled beef Whopper fresh with everything on top of any way you way. Now that's the way to do things. Our way. Have it your way. Have it your way at Burger King. We at Burger King. Governorships, like all human endeavors, must at some time come to an end. For Robert Blackwell Docking, the announcement of his retirement from the governorship came on the 2nd of March of this year. What does he really want? Fancy bottles? Full of fancy perfume and fancy prices? No! A man wants to smell like a man. There's something about Aqua Velva. He wants to be cool and refreshed. There's something about Aqua Velva. A man wants to feel like a man. His favorite nurses and his best intern. When they get together, James Whitmore finds his temperatures rising. Fire off! In. Out! Hold it! James Whitmore stars with Cleavon Little. Temperatures rising. It is inconceivable to me that Governor Docking would return to become an obscure small-town banker. It is out of character for the man and for the Democratic Party which he helped build in this state. It is just as inconceivable that he will run again for public office. Indeed, his retirement this year points that up. Two years ago, in 1972, top officials of the Democratic Party had to do some tall talking with Mrs. Docking to obtain her consent for the governor to run for re-election to a fourth term. One of the terms of that deal with Mrs. Docking was that there would be no senatorial candidacy in 1974. Docking himself told me privately in Washington, D.C. in early 1972 that he would not seek the Senate that year or in other years. In my conversation with him recorded this October, the reasons were summed up in a very few words. My heart belongs in Kansas, the governor said. And he has earned not only a place in Kansas history, but in the hearts of Kansas. The campaign slogan of 1972 was, for a vast number of people, not a slogan at all, but a truism. He stands for you. This is Roger N. Wilson reporting.